have a question for you. Wouldn't it be great if you could snap your finger and erase all memories of spanking? Some of you have some, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're right in the middle of a sermon series that's called Favorite Verses Not in the Bible. Actually, not in the Bible. First one was, God helps those who help themselves. Yes, that wasn't in the Bible. Second one was last week, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. I'll let you in on a secret. John has his secret stash back here. Yes, it's on the altar because it is sacred, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this week, um, we'll be talking about spare the rod, spoil the child. It's not in the Bible. Favorite verses, not in the Bible. Now, I know that everyone, is, uh, everyone here is not a parent. You know, you don't have to be a parent to come to this sermon. That's, but we're all a child at some point in our life. And uh, we're all, at some point in our life, around children and probably have opinions about how other children are being treated. I know that I was probably much more vocal about parenting before I actually had any children. <laughs> I remember distinctly telling a mom, you know, you really could think, do things quite differently than I had, uh, than I had my own children. Um, I uh, want to start off today with telling you about a book that Will loves to read. It's called The Elephant's Child. And I didn't use this in children's moment because uh, um, it kind of goes over their head. But the real point that I want to use today, I want to, it'll hit us right where it's supposed to. It's by the author Kipling, Jungle Book. He wrote a lot of stories, and he wrote this one, The Elephant's Child. It's very funny. It's about how the elephant got his long trunk. So it starts off with all these elephants that have very short noses, and a little elephant child, a small elephant, he goes around to uh, um, his mom and dad, uh, and he asks them, how does the crocodile, I mean, what does the crocodile eat for dinner? And they spank him. His mom spanks him, and his dad spanks him. And then he goes off to, um, I think, the hippopotamus, and the hippopotamus spanks him. And uh, then he goes off to um, the giraffe, Uncle Giraffe and Aunt Hippopotamus, and they all spank him. And, uh, and they each one say, we're spanking you for your insatiable curiosity, which to me is one of the best things about kids, right? That's one of their really wonderful gifts. So everybody, the little um, elephant goes to ask, how does, why does, what does the crocodile eat for, uh, for dinner? Every last one of them spanks him. So he finally comes to the uh, Kalola Lola bird, and uh, he asks him, how, what does the crocodile eat for dinner? And he says, well, you should go and see. You should go to the, this is one of the greatest lines of this book, you should go to the great gray-green, greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fever trees, and find out. Isn't that great? That's just poetic, isn't it? Will loves to say that, you know, all those words run together. And so he heads off on a long journey across Africa to find uh, the Limpopo, Limpopo River where the crocodile lives and find out what he eats for dinner. And along the way, he, um, he, uh, he meets a snake right there by the river. And... Um, <laughs> And he's right there with the, by the river, and the crocodile, he's found the crocodile, and the crocodile grabs him by the nose, the short nose of an elephant, and starts pulling, and he starts pulling. And the nose gets longer and longer and longer, and finally this snake helps him out. Uh, and he tells him, <laughs> as he's pulling his nose, and the snake is trying to help him get free from the crocodile, he says to, the snake says to him, Rash and inexperienced traveler, we will not seriously devote our, we will now seriously devote ourselves in a little high tension because if we do not, it is my impression that yonder self-propelled man of war with armor-plated upper deck, and by this, O oh blessed beloved, he meant the crocodile, will permanently vitiate your future career. Can you imagine a little seven-year-old reading that? It is the highlight of my day when Will chooses this book to read. It's very fun. Anyway, so the bicolor, um, 
python rock snake, the snake that's helping him, helps him get free. And now he has this long nose. So he goes back across Africa to his family, his mom and dad and his aunt and uncle and all the other animals that spanked him. And now he has a long trunk. And guess what he does to them? He spanks every last one of them. Spanks his mom, spanks his dad, spanks the hippopotamus, uh, spanks the, um, the, the giraffe. He spanks all of them. He does not tell them what a crocodile eats. He says, if you want to know, you have to go find out. So every last one of the elephants goes and finds out, goes to across Africa to find out, and they all come back with long noses. And guess what? Nobody gets spanked anymore. I know. Isn't that a funny book? But if you're a child reading that, it's very confusing why a child can be spanked for insatiable curiosity, and then the child comes back and spanks everybody. It's, a, it's very fun to watch all their little wheels turn. And you know what's interesting when I'm reading this book, or Will's reading this book to me, it's so obvious that spanking is illogical. And this book makes it quite clear how crazy it is. Because we tell kids, I often see this, <laughs> I spanked him because he hit his brother or sister. I didn't want him to, I want him to learn not to hit. I know, I know. It, spanking can be very illogical. Maybe we spank for other reasons, some other circumstance might come up that cause a little, little spanking. And yet, we do hope that they don't learn to hit out of our attempts to correct. Um, it's just spanking is illogical. It's also illogical against a very fundamental Christian teaching, uh, the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That's certainly what the elephant learned. Um, but the phrase is, spare the rod, spoil the child. It's often attributed to Christianity. Um, in fact, you see it in high-profile cases where you know, someone will claim that they spank their child, uh, maybe excessively, uh, and their justification is, uh, is the Bible or their faith, their Christian faith, um, as the reason why they feel like they have a right uh, to do that. Well, let me give you a little history behind this phrase, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. It was written in the 17th century um, by Samuel Butler uh, in a poem, a very famous poem, um, and it's really not about parenting at all. You can probably imagine what it's really about. <laughs> what is the other topic that spanking is often associated with? That's really what the poem is about. <laughs> Uh, so it's kind of funny that we've taken that into our understanding of a Christian parent, what uh, one of the guidelines for Christian parenting. Uh, spare the rod is most often used in the Bible as a metaphor. Um, you probably have it memorized. The 23rd Psalm says, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, those are really powerful images that mean a great deal to us, um, but they're really not about spanking. They're about guidance and direction, um, and that God is with us and directs us. That sounds like a really good model for parenting. Did you know that 24 countries around the world have barred spanking. It is true that there's a fine line between discipline and abuse. Uh, but spanking, you know, it's, it's not always clear for some of us. But there are a variety of ways of discipline. And I, I could have gone the route of giving a lot of different techniques of parenting and um, I chose not to. I just kind of wanted to keep it on the surface and just talk about this one passage, spare the rod, spoil the child, but know that I'm very compassionate uh, and know that 
uh, one of the greatest tasks in being a parent is to learn that there's a lot of ways to get through all the difficult moments, because there certainly are a lot of them. Um, I want to share you one story, though, that I have had, uh, one memory I have of spanking. And I don't share this just so you'll feel sorry for me, because I feel like I turned out okay. <laughs> and, uh, and I do love my parents, um, but they actually have probably apologized to me, tried to apologize to me several times about their own parenting. And I know I will one day apologize to my kids, right? We all will. Um, but I do have this memory that I wish I could just snap my finger and erase. Uh, um, Brenda and I have a twin sister named Brenda. She and I were always insatiably curious. Well, we found this can of paint, happened to be the color silver, which was all more, you know, for a kid, that's just magical. So it was silver, and we popped it open, and there was a uh, paintbrush right there. We used that paintbrush, and we painted all the rocks all the way around the house. It was so pretty. We were so proud of ourselves. Uh, my daddy came home from work, and needless to say, he was not near as excited as we were. And uh, to try to calm himself down, he sent us to go pick the peach tree limb that we were going to be spanked with. Well, needless to say, he may have calmed down, but we got really, really excited about it uh, and really nervous about it. it was ne I can remember that walk to the backyard to where the row of peaches were, peach, peach, tree, um, peach trees were, and we went around each one of those peach trees trying to find the, <laughs> I, I mean, what do you choose? The one that's thicker or the one that's flimsier? I mean, y there's no good choice, right? And for a little child, that was just torture. So we picked something, and we came back, and we got uh, a whipping for it. And um, not a fond memory, not one of their best moments uh, as a parent. Um, and I would love to just erase that, right? Because... Uh, the crazy thing is, <laughs> it was just last year, this past summer, I realized I actually like peaches. <laughs> All these long years, I have never wanted to even try a peach, and I did not know why. And I put that peach this year in my mouth, thought, I won't like this. I don't even like the smell of it. I put that peach in my mouth, and oh my gosh, it was one of the best things I've ever had in my life. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I know why I don't like peaches. Yeah, I got, I got, a, I got a whipping for that. And I, uh, so I've been trying to forget that memory so I can enjoy my peaches even more. I know, and it's silly, right? It's silly. But wouldn't it be great if I didn't even have that memory? <sighs> Gosh, and maybe you have some memory, too, that you'd love to just forget. Um, and it may have something to do with... Spare the rod, spoil the child. So a gift we could give our children is just to not even give them that memory that they have to forget. Um, parenting can sure drive you crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not telling any stories of Ailey. Yes, I'm, I'm not telling any stories of Ailey because she told me not to. So now I'm going to tell a story about Will, who didn't tell me not to. <laughs> so don't be jealous, Ailey. Don't be jealous. Um, it's a very funny story about Will, uh, one of those moments that can be, you know, really testing. Breakfast is always a morning time, as morning ritual is always very hectic, am I right? Anybody got that down pat? Oh, my, you need to talk to me. How do you do it? Uh, so it's morning's always hectic. Will's running from the table with his plate and puts it in the dishwasher like a good boy, but he did not clean it off, and so it had lots of eggs on it, and he just set it in there, and I happened to spot it. I'm like, oh, Will, come here. Look at this. I said, uh, I said that's just made a mess all in the dishwasher. You're going to need to uh, take all the dishes out when they're all clean uh, and check every last one of them to make sure that they got clean. Because when you put a lot of stuff in there, sometimes they don't get clean. So you're going to need to put these dishes up. But don't worry about it. That'll be like when you get home from school, right? Oh, he was so mad. So he stormed off and... I went, that afternoon when I went and picked him up, we're walking back home, and I'm like, uh, those dishes got washed today, so when you go home, when you get in the door, let's go ahead and put those dishes up, and then we'll be able to just, you know, not worry about it anymore. Oh, this is, this is the worst day ever. This is the worst day ever. Oh, I'm so sorry. It won't take long, though. So he walks in. He's throwing his backpack down, 
And he said, Mom, can I come up with something else to do? Well, hey, I don't know what I'm going to get out of this, right? So I, well, whatever you're thinking, Will, tell me what you're thinking. He's looking around. He's trying to come up with another job. I said, well, it needs to be equal work, and I'll do your job for you. Equal work. <sighs> okay, I'll go in the backyard and rake the leaves. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, I'll, go, I'll do your dishes, and you go on out there and rake the leaves. So I'm doing the dishes. He's out there. I can see him out the window. He's raking the leaves. He's enjoying himself. Hard to believe, right? <laughs> So I'm putting up the dishes. I get on my jacket. I go out there and help him. We rake the entire backyard. Uh, we have a really big, yard, back, big backyard. So we get it all raked up. I can't believe he's still enjoying this, not realizing how much quicker it would have been to put up the dishes, right? Uh, so we get them all in piles, and I say, Hey, Will, do you want to help me put these leaves in the compost, or do you want to run in and uh, clean up your room? I know, I know, I probably, sh I may have gone too far with that one. Um, and so he said, oh, I'll help you with the leaves. So we put a one pile in the compost, and this is too hard work. I'm going to go up, go inside and clean up my room. I'm like, okay, good luck. So I get all the leaves put up in the compost. I go in, and his room is clean. It is clean. It was a mess. I mean, it's one, it was a real mess. So it's all clean. It's about that time we go and pick up Ailey. We're getting in the car, and he says to me, Mom, this is the best day ever. <laughs> now, you know what's great about that story that is my favorite? It's not how much work we got done, and we got a lot of work done in an hour. I really still cannot believe how much work we got done in an hour. It's not that. That's, I mean, although that was really wonderful, but my favorite part about that story was Will changing his attitude from this is the worst day ever to this is the best day ever. I said, Will, why is this the best day ever? This is the best day ever because we got some work done. <laughs> He's just, the best part of being a parent is being connected to our children. It's feeling that love and even more amazing is when our kids teach us something. I mean, how many adults need to be reminded that a good job will really pick you up, um, really make you feel good. Um, one of the things about the Bible, about our faith, that I as a pastor always want to keep central is that I want scri Scripture to help me be a better person. I want my faith in God to make me be a better person. I don't think that's too much to ask. I'm actually really disappointed when my faith actually makes me be less of a person. So I'd rather find the Bible. It's a varied book. Lots in there. I'd rather find a way for the Bible to make me be a better person, help me be a better person. The Bible is full of stories about a God that unconditionally loved us and loves us. That means no matter what, we're loved. So here's a verse that I, you'll all know that I find very helpful as a parent. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. Oh, man. I want it my way, right? I'm mom. Is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Now, Maybe there was one line in there that really got you, that might help you. As a person, maybe as a parent, I'll just let you in on what really affects me. What I, if I could grasp these two things, um, I think I will feel good about being a parent. Love is patient. 
I hope as a mom that I could be more patient. But most of all, love never ends. That is one thing that parents are uniquely gifted to give your children, unconditional love. It's a gift God gives to us. It's a gift we can give our children. Love you no matter what. Love you no matter what. I want a faith that makes me a better person. I'm so glad that other verse that is not really in the Bible. So we're reading this book, and Will is so funny. I love it when they teach us something, right? So he says to me, he's right in the middle of reading about the mom and the dad and the aunt and the uncle spanking the insatiable child, insatiable curiosity. Um, and he, said, he looks up at me, he says, I'm so glad you don't spank. I said, me too, me too. And I asked him, I said, what do you think you're going to do with your children if you become a parent? Do you think you'll spank? No. I think I'll give them chores. 